Hello, second grade, and welcome to the beginning of Unit 4. We're going to be starting Unit 4, Week 1 this week, and we're going to go over our vocabulary words. Now, our first vocabulary word today is the word layers. If something has layers, it's made up of different parts that are sitting on top one another. One way to think of layers is if you think of something like lasagna, right? We have layers. We have noodles, and then we'll have sauce, and then we'll have more noodles, and then we'll have cheese. Those are layers. Those are one thing on top of another. The next word is the word seasons. Now the seasons are the four parts of the year and each one of the four seasons has its own kind of weather. So the four seasons that we have are spring, summer, fall, and winter. Next we have the word growth. Growth is something that, has, that grows or has grown. So you can say, I found a thick growth of ferns in the park. Ferns are a kind of plant. Dre, what season do you see new growth of plants? So what seasons do you see new plants growing in? Next, we have the word eerie. And something that is eerie gives you kind of a strange or weird feeling, makes you feel kind of afraid or nervous. So think about if you're hearing noises at night, right? If it's dark outside and you hear a strange noise, it, feels, it makes you um, it's an eerie sound, right? It makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit nervous. Next, we have the word temperature, or sorry, the, the word temperate. A temperate place is not very hot or not very cold. So temperate weather or a temperate climate are like medium, right? They're in between. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. It's nice out and the weather feels nice. The climate is nice, right? It's not really cold like, um, like a snowy place. It's not really hot like a desert. Temperate weather is kind of like the weather we usually have in San Diego, where it's nice outside. It doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. Next, we have the word lively. So something or someone that is lively is very active. They're very full of energy. So think of small kids, right? When they're running around and playing, they're very lively. Or baby animals, uh, like kittens or puppies, are also very lively. Next, we have the word region. A region is a large part of the Earth's surface. And usually when we're talking about regions, and this goes into social studies a bit, we're talking about a place that has the same kind of climate. That's how we, that's how we separate regions from each other. So a region is a large part of the Earth's surface, and more specifically, that has the same kind of climate. And next we have the word location. A location is a place. When you're trying to find the location of something, you're trying to find where that place is. So you can use a map to find the location. Um, if you're driving in the car, your parents might search for a location using their GPS. So a location, again, is um, where something is. Next, we're going to get into our spelling words. Now, you have spelling words that are focused on silent letters this week. So we have letter combinations. We've got two letter combinations where one of the letters is silent and one of the letters we say out loud. So one of them we don't say and one of them we do say. So the letter combinations that we're going to be looking at are WR, KN, GN, MB, and SC. So we have the word comb, crumb, seen, scent, nat, sign, knife, no, wrist, writing, cube, music, very, eat, and don't. So our first 10 words is where you're going to see those silent letters. And we're going to talk about those in just a second. So pay attention to the silent letters, which one of them you're saying, which one of them you're not saying, which one, the one that's silent. Now, when we have these letter combinations where it's two letters and one of them is a silent letter, we're going to figure out which one is going to be silent. So the letter combinations we're looking at again, our WR is the first one. We have the W silent. So when I say uh, the boys will wrestle in the wrestling match, we don't say will wrestle, we say wrestle. So that W is our silent letter or your wrist, right? If you hurt your wrist, we aren't saying the W in that one. The W is silent. We're just pronouncing the R. And same with the word wrote. As I wrote a letter to my friend. Our next letter combination is GN, where the G is silent, like in the word sign. If you see a stop sign, 
We don't say SIGIN, we say SIGN, S-I-G-N. The G is our silent letter. Or if someone feigns getting hurt, feign means to fake, right? If you're pretending. That G over there is silent as well. Or if you have the word gnome, like a garden gnome that some people have on their front yards, we don't say the G, we only pronounce the N. So in the GN combination, the G is silent. In the WR combination, the W is silent. Next, we have the KN combination, where the K is silent, like knowledge or knuckle or knives. We're not saying knowledge or knuckle or knives. We're ignoring that K, that's our silent letter, and we're only pronouncing the N. Next, we have the MB combination, where the B is, or sorry, the B is silent, not the M. The B is a silent letter. So we say the word lamb, combing, or crumbs. We don't say lamb, or combing, or crumbs. We say just the letter M, and that letter B is our silent letter. And the last combination we're looking at is SC today, where the C is silent. You're just making the S sound, like in the word scene, like a scene in a movie, or scent like the smell of something, is it scent? Or when you're studying science. So those are our letter combinations for this week, our silent letter combinations. Next, we're going to talk about sentence punctuation. And this is something we've touched on before. So this should be just a quick review. Now, always remember, we have to start every sentence with a capital letter, no matter what kind of sentence it is. We're going to talk about four different kinds of sentences here. We have a statement, a command, a question, and an exclamation. Now a statement gives information. It's a kind of sentence that tells you something. It teaches you something and gives you some kind of information and it ends with a period. If I say, I like chocolate chip cookies, I'm giving you information. We are growing strawberries in our yard. The book is on the top shelf. These are all just telling you things and they all end with a period. A command is another kind of sentence that also ends with a period, but it's telling you to do something. It's giving you an order. Clean your room. Wash your hands before dinner. Do not write in your textbook. All of these are commands, right? It's similar because they both end with a period, but they're different because one gives you information in a statement and a command is telling you to do something. Next, we have questions and exclamations. So a question is also called an interrogatory sentence. You're gonna learn that later, but just keep it in the back of your head. The question asks you something and it ends with a question mark. So when you want to find information, when you're asking someone something and you need an answer from them, you're asking them a question. So where is the new library? May I borrow your sweater? Is it dinner time yet? All of these end with a question mark. The last kind we're going to talk about today is an exclamation, or it's also called an exclamatory sentence. An exclamation is a sentence that shows a strong feeling. Usually you're, you're shouting or you're feeling a very strong feeling when you're, when you're saying these kinds of sentences. So think about if you're, if you're playing outside with your friends in the snow and you see someone throw a snowball at your friend and you say, look out for the snowball, right? You're shouting it, you're saying it with strong feeling. Or if you go outside, and you forgot your jacket and you step outside and it's freezing and you say, oh my God, it's so cold, right? That's got an exclamation point at the end of it as well. So those are our four kinds of sentences. We have statements, commands, questions, and exclamations. Next, we're going to review our prefixes and suffixes. Now remember, prefixes and suffixes are both word parts that are added onto a word and they come from the word affix, which means to stick to something or to attach to it. And their job is to change the meaning of the word that they're attached to. So a prefix comes before the word and a suffix comes after the word. So the three prefixes we're going to look at today are re, un, and dis. Re means again. So if I ask you to rewrite something, I'm asking you to write it again. If I say I need you to review your work, I'm, I need you to look at it again. Or if you need to reread your story, you're going to read it again. Un means not or the opposite of, and dis also has that same meaning. So you can say someone is unhappy, 
That means they're not happy or the opposite of happy. If you uncover something, you're removing the cover from it. If something is unfair, it's not fair. And this again has the same meaning, it means not or opposite. So if you disagree with somebody or if something disappears or if they discontinue something, that means it stops happening or they stop making it, it means not or the opposite of. Now the suffixes we're going to look at are two very common ones that you see all the time, the suffix full and the suffix less. And these are basically opposites of each other. So full means full of something, like if something is beautiful, it's full of beauty. If someone is grateful, they're full of gratitude, right? They're very thankful. Or doubtful means they're full of doubt. Less means they don't have that thing. So someone who is fearless doesn't have any fear. Someone who's hopeless um, doesn't feel like they have any hope. If you're feeling sleepless, that means you're not able to sleep. And one of the last things we're going to talk about are linking verbs and proper nouns. So we're going to do this separately. Now we know that a verb tells you what a subject is or does. So to find the verb, you ask yourself, what is the sentence telling me that the subject is or the subject is doing? Now there can be actions, like verbs can show you actions that you can observe but they also talk about feelings and things you can't necessarily see. Now, when we're talking about linking verbs specifically, we're talking about linking verbs are kinds of verbs that connect the subject of the sentence to a noun or an adjective in the sentence. They do not show action. So linking verbs don't show action. They, they connect the beginning part of your sentence to the later part of your sentence. And most of the time, they're a form of the word be. Now, be comes in different forms. It comes in the form am, is, are, was, and were. These five different forms of the word be are some of our linking verbs. So if I say, I am late for the pizza party. Without the am, without that to link my subject to the rest of my sentence, my sentence doesn't say doesn't make sense anymore. I don't say I late for the pizza party. I say I am late for the pizza party. She is my best friend. He was happy to get a puppy. They were reading a silly story. Now, linking verbs can show tense. They can tell you if something happened in the past or if it's something that's happening in the present. If we say was or were, those are past tense. Now remember was is when we're talking about one thing, something that's singular, she was or he was or I was. Were talks about plural or more than one. They were, we were. For present tense, it tells you about things that are happening right now. We use is, am, or are. He is, she is, I am, you are, or they are. Are can be for can be used for plural or it could be used for the word with the word you and last we're going to talk about proper nouns now proper nouns are like regular nouns but they name something specific so a proper noun is the name of a person place or thing and every proper noun begins with a capital letter your name is a proper noun too that's why when you write your name you start with a capital letter so some example of proper nouns are people like Ammar, Hassan, Abdurrahman, Asya, Anna, Maimuna. These are names of people. We start them with a capital letter. Places like the San Diego Zoo, Balboa Park. Uh, if we're talking about different continents like South America or Europe, if we're talking about states like California, Iowa, New York, Oregon, Tennessee, or things that have a specific name like the Empire State Building, the Pacific Ocean, Niagara Falls, Mount Rushmore. All of these are proper nouns. So they begin with a capital letter for each one. Now this is gonna take us to the end of our language arts notes. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our weekly stories. Now the first story we're going to read is called Rainforests. Genre, expository text, Rainforest by Nancy Smiler Levinson, illustrated by Diane Dawson Hearn. Essential question, what makes different parts of the world different? 
Read about how the different plants and animals that live in rainforests. A rainforest is a wet forest. It is thick with many kinds of trees and plants. Many animals live in it. Rain falls most of the year. Most rainforests grow in hot places near the equator. They are tropical rainforests. Some grow in cool places. They are temperate rainforests. Tropical rainforests. Tropical rainforests are hot and wet. How much rain falls every year? Between 80 and 200 inches. The temperatures stay almost the same every day. It is summer all the time. Tropical rainforests are jungles. They are filled with trees, plants, and vines. Thousands of kinds of animals live in them. One scientist found 43 kinds of insects on one tree. The world's largest tropical rainforest is in the Amazon region of South America. Emergent Harpy eagles Blue-headed parrots Ipe tree Rainforests have four layers. Each layer has its own life forms. The top layer is called emergent. The emergent trees poke above the rest of the forest into the sunlight. Eagles and parrots live there. Kapok treetop. Red howler monkeys. The second layer is a closed canopy. It is a living roof that covers the forest below. It is formed by treetops that grow close together. Canopy. Scarlet macaws. Tyra. Monkeys eat berries and fruits. Butterflies and hummingbirds drink nectar from flowers. Big stinging wasps crawl across leaves. This is the most lively layer of all. Wasp. Orchid. Pygmy marmoset. Swallowtail hummingbird. Yoke butterfly. Squirrel monkey. Understory. Cannonball tree. Kawatimundi. Bare faced curacao. Collared puffbird. Passion flower vine. The third layer is the understory. It gets little sunlight. Sun cannot get through the canopy. Few flowers grow. Jaguars wait in trees to leap down and catch prey on the ground. Jaguar. Staghorn fern. Morpho butterfly. Palm fern. Forest floor. Hawatson and baby. Moss. Green anaconda. Victoria Amazonia water lily. The fourth layer is the forest floor. It is dark and eerie. It is filled with plants, mosses, ferns, dead leaves, and billions of ants. Capybara. Ground fern. Apple snail. Cayman. Army ants march in swarms and eat everything in their paths. Termites live in colonies and eat wood. Deer and wild pigs are hard to see, but insects can be seen everywhere. Brocket deer. Saddleback caterpillar. Pink-toed tarantula. Heliconia. 
stink beetle, army ants, termite nest, tapir, cocoa tree, collared peccary, wild ginger, agouti, harlequin beetle, Stop and check. Reread. Why do some tree frogs never touch the ground? Reread to check your understanding. Many animals live in the trees most of their lives. Some tree frogs never touch the ground. They have sticky toe pads to help them climb slippery leaves. Sloths hang upside down all the time even when they eat and sleep. Three-toed sloth, eyelash viper, glass frog. Most plants need roots and soil to get water and food. Air plants do not. They grow on tree trunks and get water and food from the air. They are called epiphytes. Orchids and bromeliads are epiphytes. Capuchin monkey, gladiator tree frog. Temperate rainforests. Most temperate rainforests grow in the Pacific Northwest of North America. How much rain falls every year? About 100 inches. The seasons do change. Fog and mist from the Pacific Ocean bring warm summers and cool winters. Temperate rainforests have layers too, but they do not look like tropical rainforests. Sun rays shine down to the forest floor. Some trees are giant old growth trees. A Sitka spruce may be a thousand years old. Northern Spotted Owl Sitka Spruce Bald eagle, mule deer, black bear cub, cougar. Stop and check. Ask and answer questions. How do temperate rainforests look different from tropical ones? Go back to the text to find the answer. Tongass National Forest in Alaska is the largest temperate rainforest in the United States. Rainforests grow along the western side of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State, too. Most animals, such as squirrels, elks, and porcupines, live on the forest floor. The Olympic Forest is alive with plants, too. Raven, elk, bobcat, raccoon, skunk cabbage, devil's club, or Genre Expository Text Compare texts. Read about a special region in Africa. African Savannas Plants and Animals A savanna is a special region in Africa. In this part of Africa, tall grasses grow. The savanna does not have groups of trees like in a forest. It has lots of single trees scattered across the grassland. Acacia, acacia, trees grow in the savanna. They have huge thorns. The leaves of this tree are a favorite food for giraffes. Baobab, baobab, trees grow here too. They are some of the oldest trees in the world. They can grow to be as wide as a house. Just one baobab can be a home for lizards, snakes, frogs, and birds for their entire life. Many different kinds of animals live in the savanna. Zebras, lions, and meerkats all make the savanna their home. Herds of zebra roam the savanna. Here they are next to an acacia tree. There are more types of hoofed animals in the African savanna than anywhere else in the world. Elephants, antelopes, giraffes, buffaloes, and rhinos are just some of the hoofed animals found in the savanna. Seasons Think about where you live. 
What is the weather like in each season? African savannas have a rainy season and a dry season. During the rainy season, it may rain for hours each day. The rain lasts for months. Then there may be five months with no rain at all. An African savanna is near the equator, the imaginary line that is in the middle of Earth. That makes a savanna a warm location all year. A savanna is a special place filled with interesting animals and plants. Africa, equator, Atlantic Ocean, savannas. Savannas cover more than two-fifths of Africa. Make connections. What makes an African savanna different? How are a savanna's land features different from those of another region you have read about? Okay, that takes us to the end of our stories in our literature anthology. Let's go ahead and take a look at our reading and writing workshop book where we're going to be reading a selection called Alaska, a Special Place. Genre, expository text. Alaska, a special place. Essential question. What makes different parts of the world different? Read to learn what makes Alaska unique. Where can you find mountains, glaciers, and volcanoes? Alaska is the location you would visit. Alaska has different regions. In each part of the state, there are different features. Land features. The tallest mountain in the United States is in Alaska. It is called Denali. Some people go to Alaska just to climb it. Alaska also has the biggest glaciers in all of the United States. Glaciers are made when one layer of snow falls on top of another. The snowfall becomes very thick. It turns to ice. The growth of a glacier takes many years to form. Map of Alaska Map labels Alaska Juno Key Star Capital, waves, rivers, mountains, mountains, volcano, volcanoes. Temperature changes. Alaska has different temperatures. Northern Alaska is called the Arctic region. The temperatures are much colder than inside your freezer. The ground, lakes, and rivers are almost always frozen. As a result, most people live in the south of Alaska. It is warmer there. Crops grow well in the rich soil there. Animals. Alaska has many different animals. You may spot a walrus or polar bear among the glaciers. You can see a black or brown bear fishing in a river or stream. In another region, you can see a moose or caribou Walruses live in shallow waters off the coast of Alaska. Daylight and darkness. The seasons are special here too. In summer, people celebrate the mild temperate weather. These lively people also celebrate the sunlight because the sun does not set for many days. In one village, the sun doesn't set for more than 80 days you might be in bed and still see the sun shining. In winter, the sun doesn't rise in some places in Alaska. These places have more than 60 days of winter darkness. You could have afternoon soccer practice in the dark. You might think this would be eerie, but Alaskans don't think this is weird. They are used to the dark winter days. Alaska is a very interesting place to live. Alaskans don't think this is weird. They are used to the dark winter days. Alaska is a very interesting place to live. Make connections. What are three things that make Alaska interesting? How is where you live different from Alaska? How is it the same? OK, 
Okay, next we're going to get into our comprehension skill and strategy. Now our comprehension strategy for today is to reread. This is one that we've worked with in the past. And remember when we reread, we're reading something again to help us get a better understanding of the text and to see anything that we may have missed when we read it the first time. Our comprehension skill that we're going to get to after that is to compare and contrast text, which is what we were told to do during our stories. Remember, when we compare, we find the things that are the same. And when we contrast, we're looking at the things that are different. Reread. As you read, you may come across words, facts, or explanations that are new to you. You can reread these parts to make sure you understand them. Find text evidence. After reading page 263 of Alaska, a special place, I am not sure how glaciers form, I will reread this page. Land features. The tallest mountain in the United States is in Alaska. It is called Mount McKinley. Some people go to Alaska just to climb it. Alaska also has the biggest glaciers in all of the United States. Glaciers are made when one layer of snow falls on top of another. The snowfall becomes very thick. It turns to ice. The growth of a glacier takes many years to form. I read that over time, layers of snow turn to ice. These huge pieces of ice are glaciers. Rereading helped me understand this part. Compare and contrast. To compare is to tell how things are alike. To contrast is to tell how they are different. Find text evidence. When I read page 263 of Alaska, a special place, I can compare and contrast the land features in Alaska. Venn diagram. Mount McKinley, mountain to climb. Glacier, mountain of ice. Same, land features. Expository text. Alaska, a special place, is an expository text. Expository text gives facts and information about a topic, includes text features. Find text evidence. Alaska, a special place, is an expository text. It gives facts about Alaska. We also learn about Alaska by looking at the text features. Text features. A map is a flat picture of part of the Earth. A map key tells you what symbols on a map mean. Compound words. A compound word is made up of two smaller words. You can put together the meanings of each smaller word to help you learn the meaning of the compound word. Find text evidence. In the word snowfall, I see two smaller words, snow and fall. I think snowfall means snow that falls to the ground. Yes, that makes sense in this sentence. The snowfall becomes very thick. All right, that takes us to the end of our notes for this week. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing week. Take care of second grade. Bye-bye.